Hello, my friends. Today, we get the privilege of listening to one of the great intellectual heroes of the 20th century, that being, of course, Carl Sagan. We're going to listen to his pale blue dot speech and discuss afterwards why his words are so emotionally intelligent and why people find what he says to be so touching. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. That particular sentence, on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam, happens to be one of the most beautifully composed sentences in the English language. It's not my opinion that is the officially recognized status that this sentence has on many websites that list the top 10 most beautiful instances of prose and poetry in English. Carl Sagan has this remarkable ability to create spellbinding literature. I want to draw your attention to a few instances of rhetorical devices that are used. One of those rhetorical devices is, of course, the usage of anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a phrase or expression to create memorability in what one says. We have that with the word every. Every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant. It creates this melodic, almost galloping of the delivery. And all of this is catalyzed even further by the lilt of Sagan's voice. The lilt has to do with the rise and fall of your tone. And you'll notice many people in his era, in the mid to late 1900s, would have this almost musical quality to their speaking, where it would be this rise and fall, the peaks and troughs of what they say. They aren't, well, how we typically speak in society today, these very abrupt, blunt, monosyllabic, shoddy sentences that use very short words that are almost parodying like what a staccato might be in music. One last thing I want to draw your attention to before we delay watching the rest of the speech is the pathos, the appeal to emotions that's made in this first paragraph. What Sagan is doing is we find a lot of his words are building off of this undercurrent of timelessness. What I mean by that is these ideas he's presenting, these images that he's constructing, economic doctrines, every hunter and forger, every hero and coward. And he's talking about this love that we have for our planet, where he says, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know. It's this emotional relatability, this tie that's being connected between us and the feelings that we associate with our planet. He's not creating a picture of something unique to a particular age. These themes have a presence within every age epic and time period in history and starting from a very broad bird's eye view of what has been seen in the history of this world is a very important stage to set as he transitions into the next part of his speech the earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings, 
how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. I want to highlight some very creative usages of English and rhetoric. We have, of course, the metaphor, the Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. What I find most remarkable at the way that Sagan composes his writings and his speeches is that he does not bloat his sentences with any unnecessary words. They're remarkably crisp and lean, and he's pruned them of any fat. And you don't notice that until you hear sentences that are sharp and oftentimes penetrating. One note on the delivery of his speaking. Many of us deliver sentences based on the separation that a comma will provide. For example, we will see a sentence that might include clause one and a clause two, and we will read nonstop until we see the comma. And then once we arrive at that point, we'll pause very briefly and then continue on. And that, of course, is the purpose of the comma, is to provide a break in our thoughts. What Sagan does is oftentimes he will read four or five words at a time, and he will pause. The earth is a very small stage in the vast cosmic arena. And a lot of this comes down to finding out how you can interpret this low bandwidth of text and amplify it to have all of these qualities that, well, you masterfully have to inject into the performance. That's what often a conductor does with music is they take this very low bandwidth, this low resolution sheet music that has black dots that are all meticulously lined on these series of bars and graphs and they're able to become a medium for taking that data and then amplifying it into this masterful eargasm of an experience that we as an audience in an auditorium get to listen to. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. The core takeaway from this is quite clear. The underlying philosophy is to realize that this earth, or only home, is to be nurtured and preserved. And the greatest enemy of humankind is, of course, humankind. Our time on this earth as a species and as an individual is limited and it is up to us to strive to contribute as much as possible. There is no point in the war and rivers of blood that flow forth from acts of human destruction because all it does is serve to hinder the progress of civilization. And of course, his point about the different characters who have inhabited this world, the great heroes of the past, the evil people who have made an impact on what? They've made an impact on the surface of a tiny dot that floats in the vast cosmos. I'll cap my thoughts there. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully you enjoyed our analysis.